r slash no sleep. A strange man keeps coming to my orphanage and my friends keep disappearing. Your friends are getting adopted, not disappearing, was probably your first thought. And that's what I believed too at first. But they never wrote back, I never heard from any of them ever again. And I know they wouldn't do that. They might have gotten a new family and new friends, but they wouldn't have forgotten me. They wouldn't have forgotten the family they had at the orphanage. So why mention the strange man? You might ask. He's the one who keeps adopting them. He visits every year, on a few occasions he visited him more than once during a single year. But he comes every year on the 3rd of March. Without fail. When we hear a car approaching the orphanage, all of us crowd in front of the windows to see who it is. All of us want to be adopted by a new family, to finally have someone love us in a way that we've been missing out on. But as soon as we see his car, we all back away. None of us want to be chosen by him anymore. By the time I showed up at the orphanage, he had already become a regular. The other children whispered stories about him, about how he was a murderer, about what he did to the children that he took away. When I asked a friend of mine, they told me that the very first time he had shown up, everyone had been excited. He had greeted each and every one of the children, getting to know everyone at least a little bit. He had offered presents and candy and hugs. When he eventually chose someone to take home, a young boy called Oliver, everyone felt disappointed that it wasn't them. Oliver had been overjoyed. He had packed his few belongings and promised to keep in touch with everyone. He'd asked the man if they could come back to visit every now and then. The man had assured him that they would. Everyone felt a little less upset because they believed they would see Oliver again soon. And then Oliver had walked out into the cold night. He was never heard from again. It was only when the man showed up for the third year that the older children began to realize that there was something wrong. They knew that something wasn't right. He wouldn't keep coming back for child after child unless there was something suspicious. The children he took wouldn't suddenly lose touch with us. What about the people working at the orphanage? Shouldn't they be stopping him? You would be right. But whenever we asked them about the man, or told them that we didn't like him, they would brush us off. You're being silly, they would say, he brings presents and treats everyone so well. Don't say such mean things. I believe they're working with him. Selling us to him, or something along those lines. At this point he has taken at least 20 children. He took three just last year. And once again, none of them were heard from again. When his car shows up for his annual visit, we all back away. I run away to my room, as do most of the other children. I hear him talking to the staff at the orphanage, but their voices are nothing more than hushed whispers. I hear the footsteps echoing around the building, making my heart jump into my throat. My fingers clutch the bed sheets to my chest. I know it might seem childish to hide in my bed when I'm afraid, but I don't know what else to do. It's not as if I have anywhere else to go. The other children sharing the room with me are also hiding, one of them has backed away into the closet, nestling away between the fabrics. The other is sitting nonchalantly on their bed. They recently joined the orphanage and, despite being warned about this man, it hasn't really settled into their mind just yet. But I am looking out for her. We are all looking out for her. We don't want her to be taken away from us. The footsteps slowly make their way past our bedroom door, fading off down the hallway slowly. I let out a sigh of relief. I think we have made it past doomsday. And then the guilt creeps into my mind, if it isn't me, then it will be someone else. And that is another person who will never be heard from again. Why are we hiding? The girl asks, her voice louder than I would have liked. Her eyes are wide, innocent. She doesn't know the truth about this man. This is a bad man, I tell her, you don't want to go with him. She sighs, her face falling. But I heard he has candy. I stand up and move to sit beside her. I sling my arm around her shoulders, ruffling her thin hair beneath my hand. She giggles, jokingly pushing my arm away. In the short time that she has been here, we have grown very close. I feel very protective. Step. Step. My eyes widen as I hear them coming back. Their voices are clearer this time, I can just about make out what is being said. The man sounds cheerful, which only makes me feel even more dread. The ball in the pit of my stomach is growing, churning, spinning violently in a way that makes me feel as if I am going to throw up. I hold my breath again. I can only hope that they will walk past my door. Step. Closer. Step. Are they moving past? I can't quite tell. Knock. No. No, no, no. Kitty, are you in there? The man's voice rings through the door. The little girl jumps up and, before I can grab her, 
She flings the door open. Her wide smile greets the tall man. He is dressed in his usual attire, a white shirt, slightly crumpled, half tucked into his dark brown trousers. He wears a cardigan atop his shirt, the edges are fraying and the black material looks faded. He holds his arms open and I watch in horror as his big, wrinkled hands wrap around her body. She gladly accepts his hug, giggling cutely to herself. The bile rises in my throat and I fight to suppress it. His eyes wrinkle at the corners as he smiles, but it doesn't quite reach his eyes, it never has. Are you going to take me home with you? Oh, please pick me. She squeals, bouncing on her feet in front of him. Her long, thin hair waves around her shoulders, cascading like the ocean that I seem to be drowning in. I can't quite breathe. Of course I am. His voice is deep, rumbling like thunder in my ears. While the surface of his voice seems kind and welcoming, I can hear something sinister lurking beneath. I can feel his oppression trying to crush me. Go and pack your things. Katie does as he says, rushing around the room. She grasps her plastic, purple brush with her name scribbled on the back. She grabs her worn, broken teddy bear. It is missing one ear and he has a green patch on his foot that has been badly sewn back on. Both of them go into a small pink bag that she found at the park and it goes onto her back. No, I force out. Katie turns around, her face falling. Her eyes well with tears as she turns to look at me. The man's cold gaze locks with mine and I sense him daring me to go further. The member of staff beside him glares at me and I know that I have made a mistake. But I don't want him to take her. Katie, you should stay here. With me. Even though my throat is burning, I push the words from my lips. Who else am I going to play house with? I can come back to play house with you. Her chirpy voice rings in my ears. I can do that, right? She turns to face him, her eyes full of hope and life. His sharp eyes hold mine for a moment longer, before he smiles at her. He is lying. He has always lied. She runs and hugs me, before running back to take his outstretched hand. His smile falls away as he glares towards me. As the two of them turn to leave, I feel the tears rising in my throat. I am tired of him taking everyone. I'm tired of never being able to do anything. I cry out, I I'll go instead. Katie pouts at me, why don't you want me to have a family? I fumble for words. How can I tell her what this is really about? How can I explain the truth to her when I'm caught in the crossfire? The man will deny everything and he already has Katie wrapped around his finger. The staff are caught up in whatever fucked up business he is involved in. The children of the orphanage are on their own. This is our fight. And so far it has been a losing battle. But I don't want it to be like that any longer. I don't want more people to get hurt. Kitty, it's not like that. You're jealous. She shouts at me, I hate you. With that, she turns and tugs the man along behind her. I simply stand in the middle of our shared room, staring at their backs as they walk down the hallway. My world is crumbling down around me, falling like shards of glass. My entire body feels numb as I hear his car starting up in the distance. Another one of my friends has been taken. Another child has been whisked away to whatever torture he has planned for them. And yet again, we were unable to do anything. Another year of waiting is descending upon us. Another year where we will be free from his clutches. Some of the older children will finally be able to leave, and they can escape from the terror we feel every day. But some new children will also join the orphanage, completely unaware of what will await them. The rest of us are safe. At least until next year.